Hello and welcome to my channel, In Search of Wonder. My name is Anne and this is my September recap. September was a decent reading month, I suppose. I read a total of 11 books and I DNF'd one. So well, let's start with the DNF, which I um, talked about all of these books already on various um, videos. I'll link to my recent reading wrap-ups in the description box. So if you want more in-depth reviews of any of these books and haven't seen them, you can go watch those videos. The Brilliance of Stars was my DNF by Janelle Chiselski. And that one, I just felt like it was too brutal and too violent. And I'm just not a big fan of spy stories. So I think there are probably spy stories out there that I would enjoy. Um, I have read some one or two real life spy stories that I enjoyed, but I don't know, spy novels as a genre, I'm thinking probably not my thing. So I didn't have to that one. And let's see, among the books that I read were three classics, one cozy mystery, two suspense, I guess would be the category, and then one, two, three, historical fiction, one nonfiction, and one that's kind of defies categorization. So let's talk about the classics first. Um, Cymbeline is the one I finished most recently. That is a play by Shakespeare. And I have, I read it from this bind up here that I'm not about to take off the shelf right now. It's really big and stuff. Cymbeline was enjoyable. Not my favorite Shakespeare, I don't think, but it was definitely enjoyable. I really liked the heroine of the story, Imogene. She was a fantastic character, really liked her. Cymbeline, who was the main character, was oddly not very much present in the story, but it was interesting. The other two classics I read were Ethan Fromm and Fahrenheit 451, and I gave them both five stars. Fantastic reads. Ethan Frome was a reread for me, and I love this vintage copy that I have. I probably should get a nicer copy, I guess, but this one is still in pretty good condition. Um, and I just, I like the, the drawing on the front. And I just love that, I don't know, the size of it and everything. Anyway, so I read Ethan Frome and love this. This one is definitely a story that packs a punch, an emotional punch and really enjoyed it. It's, enjoying is a strange word to use. And if you've read it, you know what I mean. And when you read it, you'll know what I mean. But I gave it five stars. Let's see, uh, in my notes, I wrote that ending though. And such powerful writing were my other comments. So really enjoyed Ethan from. And then, I read Fahrenheit 451 with Jeanette Jane Reeds and Catherine at Regional Love. And what a, a heart-stopping, blood-pumping story this one is. Um, it just grabs you and keeps you in a chokehold until you're done with this story. Very gripping, fast-paced, tension-filled. Uh, the author is saying a lot of really important things here in this story that are very applicable to us in our modern day. I can see why it is a modern classic. There was a lot of cussing in part three that I wasn't quite prepared for. I didn't, well, in the sense that I didn't realize that it would be in this book, but it was so impactful that I definitely would recommend reading it in spite of that. And... I think it's a very important story. So really enjoyed Fahrenheit 451. And that was my first Ray Bradbury. So I look forward to reading more from them. Also reading these accomplished some goals in my reading journal. So Ray Bradbury was actually on my list of authors that classic authors that I want to try. So I've read three out of five of those this year. And then Ethan Frome was on my list of rereads for this year, which I'm glad I got something done on there, but 
I do have quite a few left that I still need to read. So <laughs> this is my list. Um, I was able to check off Ethan Frome and another book that I'll talk about in a minute, but I still have one, two, three, four on there and that I haven't reread yet and only three months left in the year. So I don't think I'm going to get to all of those, but we'll see what other things are coming up. So those crossed off some things on my goals for this year. So that was good. But back to my September reads, um, the other things that I read. Next up, let's talk about the historical fiction. So I read Nightbird Calling by Kathy Golke, and that was four and a half stars. And it was really good. It was set in North Carolina, in No Creek, North Carolina. And it was about a woman who was escape escaping an abusive relationship and kind of her, her journey back from that. But there was a lot going on besides that. There was a lot happening in the town where she lived. And so it's just as much about that kind of stuff. It was in the era where the Ku Klux Klan was very active. And so that a lot of that comes into the story and other stuff was going on. So a uh, really good story. In my notes, I wrote that it was well written. I did struggle with the main um, romantic relationship in the story, which was just a thread in this. Like it was just a story thread. It wasn't the main point. Uh, however, that relationship bordered on an adulterous relationship for me. So I didn't really love that. And then the other historical fictions that I read were Cast a Road Before Me, uh, which I don't have my copy with me. And that one I gave three, two and a half stars. Again, I was a little bit disappointed with the way that the conflict in the story was resolved. There was a like a mill workers um, strike kind of thing going on in the story. And the way that it was resolved involved intentional deception and that was basically excused and swept under the rug as, well, it worked, it solved the problem, so everything's fine, it's good. God used deception to fix this. And that was what I had a problem with. It was the fact that it was in a Christian novel was one thing, but in any novel, Christian or not, I would object to that because that's just not good. Like intentional deception will create additional problems. It doesn't solve problems. So, uh, I didn't enjoy that aspect of it, but it, it was good writing. Um, Rodi Lang Collins is the author who writes a lot of suspense and thriller type stories. Um, this one was not that, but just that aspect of it, I, I didn't really love. And then, um, Blue Cloak is a true historical crime story. And I talked at length about this, um, really another gripping story that just puts you in a chokehold <clears throat> and keeps you reading. And it was very well written. I, I enjoyed reading it. Again, enjoy is kind of a funny word to use, but it was a compelling story. Let's put it that way. And I gave it four and a half stars. Let's see. Next, I read A Cozy Mystery which is a genre I, I don't have a great deal of experience with. I don't read a lot of cozy mystery, although I have read some in the past, but I kind of want to read more because it's kind of like, you know, trendy thing to do these days. And I, I'm nothing if not trendy, right? <laughs> hmm. All of these cozy mysteries out there with these cute titles and these fun sounding stories. So I thought I'd jump on that bandwagon, especially since this one had coffee all over it from title to series title, to concept, to everything. So, you know, I'm all about that. Speaking of which, give me a little sip here. So I enjoyed this more than the most recent cozy mystery I read, which I ended up DNFing. Well, one of the recent ones that I read, I ended up DNFing. But this was fun. It was cute. It was fine. A little bit, the humor bordered a little bit on, on crass and suggestive kind of humor. At times, um, the story itself was interesting. I enjoyed the setting. I really enjoyed the setting and I enjoyed the characters. And uh, the main character was funny in her quest for the clues to solve the mystery. So overall, it was good. I gave it three stars, which is my general, I liked it, kind of rating. 
And then um, I also read the first two books in Terry Blackstock's If I Run series and really enjoyed it. And I definitely will be reading the third one at some point to find out the resolution to the whole story. My only thing about this, I gave both of these four stars, I think. The writing was great. Two complaints. One, it's first person, present tense. Why? Secondly, one longer novel rather than a trilogy would have been perfect for this because there's a lot of stuff added to each of the first two books that are separate storylines that don't contribute to the main storyline at all. And so I feel like it could have been a tighter novel and more believable if it had just stuck with the main story thread and just been, you know, one book instead of three. But all the same, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's an interesting read. It's another one. There was a lot of like, what is the word I'm looking for? Heart racing stories that I read this month, this series, and then The Blue Cloak and Fahrenheit 451. And then Ethan Frome in a different way. That one's not like fast paced. It's just emotionally very intense. So a lot of intense reading. Even Nightbird Calling was an emotionally intense book in many places. So yeah, there was a lot of intensity going on this month. This one was a break from all of that intensity. And that was In Search of a Prince by Tony Shiloh, which was a fun story. I gave it three and a half stars. A good writing, Tony Shiloh is a, is a great author. Um, it's not my usual sort of story, but I definitely enjoyed it. I really loved the movie Princess Diaries when it came out, and this was a spinoff of that. So I really, I don't know, feelings of nostalgia. This, this story is kind of like playing off of that, that idea, that trope. So I was intrigued by it for that reason, and it was very good. There is another book that goes with this one. I don't know if it's technically a duology or they just like companion novels. And it, the second book is about her friend. And I'm interested in reading it. I've heard mixed reviews, but I'm interested in reading that one as well. But finally read this one uh, that had been on my shelves for a while. And then the nonfiction I read, uh, which I don't have right here next to me is And They All Sang Hallelujah, which is about the camp meeting tradition in the South that was um, very common during the antebellum era. And it was just a really interesting look at that, kind of from a niche perspective of the the hymns and those gospel songs that they sang. And a lot of what we consider traditional hymns, aside from the ones that grew out of the more high church denominations um, <clears throat> in the Northeast of the United States and uh, of course, England, and also some German and Scottish hymns or whatever. A lot of the hymns that we think of as like classic traditional hymns actually came out of that era and that movement. Maybe not in the early 1800s per se, but many of them did. And then that movement grew into, kind of laid the foundation for the gospel songs that became very popular. Like for example, um, the Old Rugged Cross would be an example of a gospel song that we often think of as like a, a, a classic traditional favorite hymn. It's really more of a gospel song and other ones like that um, kind of grew out of that tradition. Anyway, this is all stuff that interests me very much and I enjoyed reading that story, but it is a bit of a niche book, not for everybody, but I, I liked it. So how did that help me or how did I do, I should say, on my challenges that I had joined for the month of September. So there was series September, there was shake September, and there was shorty September, and I was participating in all three of them. And I ended up being a little bit more successful than I had thought that I would be. So first of all, for series September, this is the, the bingo board that they had. And I guess I got two bingos because I got the one across this way and the one down this way. So that's not too bad. I wasn't sure how much I would accomplish. So for the mystery, I read Cold Brew Corpse by Tara Lavish. And for the contemporary, I counted the second book in the Terry Blackstock series for that because it's set in contemporary times. And then for horror, The Blue Cloak by Shannon McNair, which is not te technically horror, but trust me, that story is horrifying, so it counts. So that was that side. And then across the top, um, mystery. And then historical fiction, Cast a Road Before Me by Brandy Lynn Collins, which was set in the 60s in a town in Kentucky. And then fantasy, 
I counted In Search of a Prince by Tony Shiloh for that one because it is kind of a fairy tale esque story, even though there's no magic or fairies involved. And it's set in a mythical place in Africa. I mean, not mythical, but like imaginary. It's not a real place. And it has kind of that a fantastical sort of feeling to it, but it's not really a fantasy story. But I counted it for that because I can. And then for thriller, I counted If I Run by Terry Blackstock. Again, I'm not 100% sure it really qualifies strictly as that as a genre, but it is like a thrilling kind of story. So I did really well with series September, especially considering I'm not really much of a series girl. I don't really love series. So that was good. I, I congratulate myself on what I did with that. And then um, for the Shake Summer, I read Cymbeline, although... I totally forgot to participate in the um, the group discussion about it. Um, that, that was one reason why I chose Cymbeline because that was one of the ones that they were doing as a group read. And I totally forgot to participate in that. The, but anyways, that one was good. And it I try to read at least one Shakespeare every year. It took me until September this year, but I did it. And then for Shorty September, several of my books qualified for that. Uh, definitely Ethan Frome, that one clocks in at 181 pages and it's supposed to be 200 or less. Uh, what were the other ones? I know, um, and they all sang Hallelujah, definitely was fewer than 200 pages. That was the nonfiction one. And that's all. Oh, Cymbeline. Cymbeline was also shorter than 200 pages. So I read three for that one. So that's not too shabby. And for my year long reading challenges, the only one, no, I was doing two of them. So for Chantel Read Your, read Your Shelf Challenge, I was supposed to read a spy or espionage story. And that was The Brilliance of Stars, which was so promising because I actually really enjoyed the beginning of it and the setup of the whole concept and how the two main characters became spies in the first place. That was really fun. And I was really enjoying that, but then it just took a turn for me and I did after about halfway through, but I'm still counting it for that because I read more than half of it. I'm counting it. And then um, for the um, Read Your Classics Challenge that I participate in, oh, the prompt was to read a pastoral novel. And so Cymbeline qualified as a pastoral novel. Although, I mean, it's not a novel, it's a um, play, obviously, but it does qualify as pastoral because two of the acts, at least, actually, I think definitely acts three and four, part of act five. And I can't remember if any of act two was as well, but they are definitely set in the countryside of Britain. And in fact, three of the characters in the story live in a cave in the countryside of Britain. So, uh, and a lot of the, the action in the story takes place there. So. It qualifies as pastoral and does have some pastoral description, not a great deal, but the setting is definitely pastoral and part of it. So counted for that. And then that those were the only um, other challenges that I was participating in for September. So as for five star reads, I added Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton and Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. And that's all that I added in the way of five star reads. For my other reading goals for the year, I didn't really add anything. I have a list of 2023 releases I still haven't gotten to. And I have a whole list of books that are on my shelf that I haven't read yet. Didn't get to any of those. Added one nonfiction read to my list. So I think now I've read 12. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. Yes. So now I've read 12, which was my goal for the year, to read 12 nonfiction. So I'm happy about that. And as I already said, for my um, reread list, I crossed off another one. So uh, actually, I crossed off two because um, Castle Road Before Me, I meant to mention, was also a reread. So I was able to also cross that one off the list, and I have four left there. And I was able to cross off Cymbeline off of my Shakespeare comedies that I want to read. And that's not necessarily a goal just for this year. It's just an ongoing goal. Although it, it 
definitely has occurred to me at the rate of one a year. It's gonna take me a long time to get through all the Shakespeare's, but I mean, there's really no urgency. They'll be there. So I'm just flipping through just to make sure that there's nothing else. I did say on my bracket for the year that my September favorite was Fahrenheit 451, probably because of all the books I read in September, it was definitely the most impactful and left the biggest impression on me. Okay, so that wraps up everything that I read in September. I am going to tack on a little bit of a book haul here at the end of this video because I have, I did haul some books in September that I haven't mentioned yet. So I went to my niece's wedding in Ohio a couple weekends ago and we went to a church rummage sale and they had some books there and there weren't really very many interesting books, but I did pick up this one. They had where you could fill a bag for five bucks and I had a bunch of clothes in the bag, but including some nice blazers for my husband and my son, which was amazing. But um, this was really the only book that interested me, but I figured basically I was getting it for free. So I just tucked it in my bag. I like Eric Metaxas, but I have, I've not read much of anything by him. Actually, I think I've only officially read like a children's book by him, a children's history book. So I do want to read some of him. And this one isn't one of his titles that has been like, oh, I really want to read it, but it's in great condition. And I think it's interesting and I will read it eventually. That is Seven More Men by Eric Metaxas. And then I ordered from Book Outlet, the first time I ever made an out, uh, order on Book Outlet. And I ordered this Paper Mill Press copy, that's what they call it, right? But yeah, Paper Mill Press copy of Dracula because I'm hoping to read it for Victober. Although here we are on October 5th and I haven't had a chance to crack it open yet. I'm reading other stuff at the moment and it is a bit of a chunker. So I don't know. I, I might start it in October, but it's probably gonna take me a little bit longer than that to finish it. We'll see. But I love this copy. It's got like silver foil here and it's got like this um, velvety feel here. And I love the red, I love, I love the colors. I just love that. It's a really cool copy. Anyway, so I may hate the book for all I know, but at least I have a gorgeous copy of it. <laughs> and then my sister, um, she stopped by the other day and she was like, Hey, was this a book that you were wanting to read? And I was like, oh, actually, yes, that does interest me. She's like, oh, well, I picked it up at thrift store the other day. So here you go. You can have it. So, um, you know, it's really nice to have sisters like that. Just drop books by. And yes, this is on, this has been on my TBR. I have read Alison Pataki's um, book, Cece, about uh, the Empress of Austria. Marjorie Post, I have been to her house it's near DC, her family's house. And there's basically like a museum there and they have the largest collection of Russian artifacts outside of Russia. And it's really cool. So what is the name of that house? Does it say on here? Nope, I forget the names. It starts with an H, something or other. Anyway, I'd love to go back there actually because it was at the gardens. The gardens were amazing at the house, so beautiful. Anyway, this is The Magnificent Lives of Marjorie Post. Post being the Post Serial Company. So she was an heiress and she had a very interesting life. And so this is a um, biographical novel about it, which as you know, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, is one of my favorite genres, biographical novels. I just really enjoy. So very glad my sister picked that up for me. And then I ordered this. Now I was a dork and I forgot to put this in my video, which by the time you see this, it will already have gone live. <laughs> and I need to do a little editing and in there. Anyway, there is a C.S. Lewis readathon in November that I'm co-hosting with a Morgan at Morgan's and this bookshelf and a couple of other channels. And Miracles by C.S. Lewis is going to be the group read. So I did not have that one. And I figured it would probably be one that I would like to have in my library. So I went ahead and ordered it off of Pango Books. And this, guys, I don't know. I paid like five bucks or something for it. It is such a beautiful copy and it's in perfect condition, perfect condition. Look at those deckled edges. And it's got um, like this, you know, like little built-in bookmark situation going on there. 
and the back flap also. And it's just like this really wonderful quality of paper and everything. Wonderful. So Miracles by C.S. Lewis, which I will be reading in November. And then another book I ordered from Book Outlet to read in October, for Victober, is the plays by Oscar Wilde. So I li have loved the two plays that I've read by Oscar Wilde. And I'm going to read another one, hopefully, for Victober, Lady Windermere's fan. So I ordered this book because the only one I have is like a, a Dover thrift edition of The Importance of Being Earnest. So I thought I would get this nice copy that has not only that one, um, but An Ideal Husband, which I've also read, and then three other plays. So I am looking forward to reading Lady Windermere's fan from here. I will say it's a little bit, like, I don't know, binding is, is one that I feel like it's going to get, like, really creased as I read it, but I honestly don't care too much about that. It just is, like, a little bit more difficult to read from. And then my son, I'm... Last year, I read everything that my ninth grader read in his freshman year of high school literature. And so I hope to do the same thing this year with my eighth grader because it occurred to me that this is the last time I'm going to have an eighth grader. And so I, I can, if I do this this way now, then I can alternate the years and I can get all the way from eighth through 12th grade reading the same literature that they read. So I don't know if I'm going to read, I don't know if I'm going to read all of them because like right now he's reading the Iliad and I really just don't want to, I'm zero interest in reading the Iliad. It's one of those things that's like, probably I should, but I really don't care about it. And I, I don't know. It's, yeah. But anyways, um, I am interested in reading at least some of the books that he read. And one of the ones that I'm interested in reading is this Greek myths. Now I have another Greek myths that's on my 50 by 50 TBR, but I decided to start with this one, which he read for his class. It might be like a children's version. It does look like maybe a student version or whatever, but that's fine with me. I don't care. Uh, it's copyright 1949 by Olivia E. Coolidge. And yeah, it just has stories of Greek gods, the trickery of Hermes, the loves of Apollo, Arachne, the origin of the seasons. Anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a long time because so many classics reference ancient mythology and pulls, and so many stories are pulled from the stories of ancient mythology. And so it's really an important basis and foundation for classic literature and I am often at a loss. I, <laughs> I ask my kids, I'm like, who is this Greek god or goddess and what are they famous for and what do they do so that I can understand the story I'm reading. But now once I read this, I will have my own understanding. So I don't know when I will get to this, but this is one that he's reading this year that I definitely want to read. And the other one that he is going to read that I want to read is the Aeneid by Virgil. So one more book in my haul. And this is actually not a book for me to keep, but a friend of mine, you know who you are, uh, recently joined a book club or a book club was just starting. And she was asking me about the very first book that they were going to read. And I was like, oh, I've heard really good things about it. I think you will probably enjoy it. And I was like, and I'm kind of interested in it myself. It, the idea kind of intrigues me. And so she ended up reading the book and she really enjoyed it. And she enjoyed this discussion and everything. So she lent me her copy and that is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. So I would like to read this sooner rather than later so I can um, get it back to her in the condition in which she lent it to me. Um, so I am looking forward to trying that at some point in the near future. So that is my book haul for September. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> Anyways, so that was my September altogether, my reading, and hopefully I can get this edited and posted before it's November because that would be fantastic. And I will see you all next time. Please let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, your thoughts about them. How did your reading go in September? Did you have any fantastic reads? Any DNFs? Let me know. 
and I will chat with you next time. Bye.